What's up, guys? It's Dave Marshall with the RCA Marshall YouTube channel, and thank you for watching the Spectrum AR637T programming series. In this installment of the series, we're going to be discussing how to perform the necessary updates on the DX and IX series transmitters in order to take advantage of the forward programming functionality on the AR637T. Before we get started, make sure you hit the subscribe button and click that notification icon so you're always made aware when new videos come out on the channel. Now let's get started with updating the DX series transmitters. All right, so we're going to be discussing the process of uh, setting up your DX series transmitter to take advantage of forward programming on the new smart series of uh, receivers such as the AR637T. Uh, what we're going to need, uh, if you haven't updated your radio already and if you haven't registered, we're going to walk through that entire process. But what you'll need is an SD card. Now, in my case, I just have a, uh, a micro SD card, like we see here. It's a uh, very small, let me see if I can get that to focus. So anyway, it's a, it's a micro SD card, and I put this into a, uh, an SD card adapter. So we can just slide that in there. And what we're gonna be showing you is how to retrieve the serial number from your radio, which will make your registration process a lot easier if you haven't registered your transmitter yet. So on the bottom of your transmitter, there is a slot to insert an SD card. Now what we can do is, uh, it actually goes with the pins up or facing the front of the transmitter. We'll slide that in there and push it until it locks in place. All right, now that we have our SD card in place, we're gonna go ahead and power on the transmitter using our power switch. And you can tell here in the upper left hand corner when it first boots up what firmware version you're sitting on. If you didn't notice, it's sitting at 2.01. So we will need to upgrade this because in order to take advantage of forward programming, we need to be at at least 2.05, which is the latest update. So uh, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to export the serial number data from the DX6 over to the SD card. And that's a fairly simple process. So what we do is we wanna press our roller and then slide all the way down to system setup. Press the roller again. We're gonna click yes here where it asks if we want to make sure that the RF module will be disabled, that's fine. And now we're gonna slide now that we're in the system setup menu, we're going to go all the way down again to set, uh, system settings, and we're going to hit the, uh, the roller again. And now we can see, you know, the username I have set up, contrast settings, backlighting, whatever. And we're going to go down to next. And this will show us system sounds you know, trim style, volume controls, etc. We'll go to next again. And here's where we see our serial number. So it'll show our serial number. Now, if you're, you know, a brave soul, you could actually take the serial data that we see here and type it into the registration page. But, you know, because it is case sensitive and there's a lot of uppercase and lowercase going on here, I would suggest exporting it onto an SD card and uh, we'll go through the registration process that way. It's much easier. So let's go ahead and scroll over, and what we'll see is, you know, we start at list. As we scroll to the right, it'll go to previous, and then it will ho uh, hover over export. When it says export, we're gonna go ahead and hit the button uh, on the scroll wheel, and it just created this my underscore dx6.xml file. We can scroll over, uh, we can go to back, and now we can just back out of that because now that XML file is on our SD card, and what we're gonna do from this point is shift over to our PC and take a look at what's on the SD card and how we can use that to register the transmitter. All right, so we're sitting in our Windows desktop and we wanna go ahead and open up a Windows Explorer which will allow us to uh, you know, explore the file system and what we can see here on this left hand side under this PC, we see the DX6, which is our G drive. That is our SD card reader, which will allow us to see the contents. Now inside that SD card right now, uh, we see the exported file. 
that was generated by the export function of the dx6 transmitter and it's my underscore dx6.xml and uh, we just want to remember where that's saved uh, like i said it's on the sd card so we should be able to retrieve that here shortly and uh, our next step we're going to go ahead and go to spectrumrc.com and get our transmitter registered all right so we're here at spectrumrc.com if you do not have a my spectrum account you'll need to sign up for one which is a pretty simple process we can just click sign up here and just enter all your data in hit register it'll create a username you may need to verify it with uh, with an email address or something like that i've already got an account so i'm going to go ahead and get logged in all right so now we're back at the spectrum rc home page and i am logged in to uh, to my my spectrum account so I will just hit my spectrum and that will take me over here where I can see all of the different products that I've got, um, you know, through my, uh, my, my spectrum account, which, um, you know, we can see that there's quite a bit of stuff here. Uh, what would we do if we wanted to register a new product? We, what we'll do is over here on the left, we'll click product registration. So once we click on product registration, it's going to take us over here to the product register, uh, the product registration page where we would fill out our um, our personal information to register it to us. And then uh, down here in the About My Product section, this is where you'll be able to take advantage of having exported that serial number file. So uh, what we want to do is we want to select the kind of radio that we are going to be, or actually the product that we're going to be uh, that we're going to be registering. In this case, it's a DX6 G2 G3, uh, which is right here. Now, under the serial number, you can go here and type it in manually. So the way that we would do this is it says right here, upload serial number from XML file. Um, and right here, we can hit this select button. We can go to our SD card, which is in this case labeled DX6. And what we're going to do is we're going to load up that my underscore DX6.XML file, click open and click the upload from XML file button. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna grab the, uh, the serial number from the XML data that's in that file. So you don't have to type in anything. It's a much simpler process. Uh, and then you would go through the registration product uh, or process. Now I've already got this uh, particular transmitter registered. So we're gonna go ahead and move forward as though I just registered it new. Now, what we can do here is uh, where it says, you know, where that particular radio is sitting under Dave's DX6. Uh, this is the transmitter uh, in question. And what I want to do is go over here to download updates. Now, the reason we need to do the registration is because you won't be able to get the updates for your uh, transmitter unless you're registered with your MySpectrum account. Now, the update files that you download are specifically tagged for your transmitter. You cannot use the update file from a different transmitter. You have to do this, and you have to get it from here. Now, uh, when we looked at my uh, DX6 previously, we saw that it was sitting on 2.01. We need to get that up to 2.05, right? So I'm going to go here to download updates. And I can see here, uh, when I hit download updates, it's going to go over to software update instructions. So we want to be able to download the DX6 Airware version 2.05 and import that or, or use the 2.05 update file to update our DX6. So I'm going to go ahead and click download right here. And it is going to download the spmtx.sax file uh, which we see right here now I'm going to minimize that and we're just going to create a folder on the desktop and we're going to call that dx6 airware 2.05 and we're going to move that spmtx.sax file into the dx6 airware folder and that's just to make sure that we keep it um, 
you know, kind of uniform on the computer or keep it where we can, you know, be able to identify what it is. Because the thing is, when you uh, grab these download files, whether it's 2.01, 2.05, whatever the case may be, when you first download it, it's always going to have the same file name when you initially download the file, which is spmtx.sax. Now, whether that's 2.05, 2.01, it doesn't matter. They're always going to have the same file name. So I like to create these, uh, these different folders so I can identify exactly what it is that I'm looking at instead of having a bunch of files with the same name all over the computer. Now, what we want to do at this point is we want to take that spmtx.sax file and we want to copy that to the root directory, which is the, the main you know, subfolder or the main folder of the SD card that we've still got in the computer. So if we go down here to DX6, we've still got the my underscore DX6.xml. We're just going to move that file. So we copied it from the SD card. We're going to paste it here. So now we've got that spmtx.sax from our DX6 Airware 2.05 folder on the root directory of the SD card. Now that's not the only thing that you're going to want to do. If we go back over here to our Airware uh, download page, uh, we'll also see that in conjunction with the Airware update, you also need to install the sound updates. Uh, which you may download from this link. Installation uh, instructions are found in the zip file. So we'll go to HTTP. We'll just click the link that we have right here, which takes us to our sound files. And we see that we've got uh, version 1.09. And we're going to go ahead and grab the English version. So over here on the left is all of our installation instructions in various languages. And over here on the right hand column is the actual sound files themselves, which are uh, also in various languages. So we want the English version of the sound file, which we'll grab here. So we've got English V1 underscore zero nine. And we will show that in a folder. So let's go ahead and copy that and we're going to take that SVX file that we just downloaded and we're going to put that on the root directory of our SD card as well. So we'll go ahead and paste that there. So we've got that English underscore V1 underscore 09 dot SVX which is our voice file. And now that we've got both of those files uh, downloaded and installed on the root directory of our SD card, we can go ahead and move back over to the DX6 to see how this process works out. All right, so now we are looking at the uh, at the DX6 transmitter again. What we're going to do is we're going to take that SD card from uh, the computer where we just copied our voice files and our update file to bring it up to 2.05. Uh, we'll go ahead and insert that in the transmitter. And the only thing that we need to do at this point, as long as everything is in the right spot, right? So your update file for your 2.05 airware needs to be installed uh, on the root directory of the SD card. And what we're going to see is as soon as we turn it on, the transmitter is going to start that upgrade process. So you see that uh, we've got the little bar there going across the bottom. And this whole process takes a few minutes. So we're going to go ahead and... Uh, do a little bit of editing magic and fast forward through that process, but you'll see the whole thing happening, just not in real time. So now that the uh, the update process is complete, um, you know there's a couple of different ways to verify the uh, the version of Airware that you're running. One of them is right here during both the power on and power off cycles. You can see the version that you're running and just watch for it here in the upper right hand corner. So we're going to go ahead and power the transmitter back on and you'll see where it says V2.05 or just 2.05. Right, so that tells us that we're running the 2.05 version of Airware which should give us access to forward programming. 
Now, the other way that we can check that is by hitting our scroll wheel and going down to System Setup, tap it again, click Yes, scroll down to System Settings, and here we can go to Next, hit Next again, and we can see here at the Serial Number section, uh, just under where it says export, it's going to have the version number of airway that you're running right now, which is 2.05. So we are good to go uh, with regard to the version of airway that we're running. Now let's go and look at how we update those, uh, those sound files. So we're going to go back and back again. And here under System Setup, we're going to go to Transfer SD Card. Right, and now we're going to, under Options, we want to go ahead and click on our scroll wheel. And you'll see all of the different options going by here. So we're going to update firmware, and now we see update sound. Update sound is what we want to do to, um, to update the sound file. So we're going to go ahead and click that, and we're going to pick the English underscore V1 underscore zero nine dot SVX file. Please stand by. And now uh, it's going to take about five minutes. So again, you know, you're going to see it happening, but it's not going to be in real time. We're just going to fast forward past this part. All right, so it looks like we are now complete with the installation of the, um, the sound updates. Uh, and now we are uh, finished up with the version 2.05 update for the DX6. And now the DX6 with the 2.05 firmware update is ready and uh, can take advantage of the forward programming in the ar 6370 so that's everything we need to update the DX series transmitters to the latest version of Airware. Now let's look at the process that we need for our IX series transmitters. On the IX series transmitters, registering the transmitter and preparing the transmitter for an Airware upgrade are quite a bit simpler than they are with the DX series transmitters. For the IX series, uh, and this is an IX12 by the way, the IX20 will be uh, slightly different. But uh, we would click System Settings that you can see down there in the lower right. We'll uh, tap on System Settings and then let's go to Product Information. And if you haven't registered your radio yet, under Product Information is where you can go ahead and register. Now you can click the Register Transmitter icon, uh, which I have already done with this transmitter. But let's go ahead and click it. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to ask for our user ID and password to uh, log into our MySpectrum account. So if you've already got a MySpectrum account, you can go ahead and click Login, and it will register your IX12 for you automatically. If you don't have one, you can hit New Sign Up, and it will walk you through the process of uh, creating a MySpectrum account. Now, once you've got your... Uh, your transmitter registered we can go back out to the main screen All right, when we're on the uh, the main screen in order for us to update the airware software we're going to need to get to the Google Play Store the way that we'll do that is we can tap over here on the far right hand side of the screen which will bring up the uh, the three icons that you see there just hit the circle icon that's in the middle and that's going to take us to our Android home screen. From there, we can hit the system tray, which is the small circle icon off to the right side with the, uh, the dots in it. We'll tap that, and that will take us to our app tray. And just go to the Google Play Store. When we get to the App Store, you'll want to uh, tap what's called a hamburger icon. It's just to the left side there where it says search for apps and games. We can tap on that and then go to My Apps and Games. 
And right now I've got some updates pending that are just generally for uh, the Google Android system. Uh, but let's go to installed. So typically when you have an application like Airware that needs to be updated, it would be listed under your updates. But when we go to installed, we'll be able to see all the different devices that we have installed here. And we can see Spectrum Airware iX12. So we'll tap on that. And, you know, this is the software that's running the iX12. So we see here that the last update was 19 December of 2019. But if there were an update available up here where it says open, uh, you would actually have the option to go ahead and update that software. So this is how you get to uh, the App Store and the ability to update your iX12. Now, because this one is already up to date with the latest update that's forward programming compatible, I'm not going to need to do any upgrades on this one, but this is where you would go to do it. So, All right, so as you guys can see, the registration and update process for the DX series versus the iX series transmitters are completely different and hopefully this video was able to get you going down the right track to make that happen in order to take advantage of our forward programming process on the AR637T. Uh, for you to be able to take advantage of that on the DX series transmitters you need to be at Airware version 2.05 or greater and on the iX series we just want to make sure that we've got the latest version of Airware installed from the Google Play Store. In our next installment of the series, we're going to be discussing how to bind the AR637T to our transmitter and all the different methods that we can do that. Be sure to check the video description for links to all the products that you saw here. Like, share, subscribe, and be sure to hit that notification icon so you're always made aware when new videos are coming out. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.